so you just bought your first bike. Let's say you got a giant TCR Advance Pro 2, pretty gassed. You got it, got carbon wheels, you got the whole carbon frame, stiffest frame on the market, all that bollocks. And then you scroll down, you're like, oh, the big gear's pretty good. And you're like, ah, oh, nah. Ah, oh, nah. I got 5236, 1128. And that's when you know climbing anything over about 8% full gas for me is, is just not really possible. And if I want to chill, you know, anything over 5% is just not really. Not really good. So anyway, you're thinking like, how can I change my gears? So I went on the old bike gear calculator, and I did two calculations. So I did a 50-34, and then I basically showed the biggest gears and the smallest gears. So a 50-11 will get you about 63 k's an hour, 57 k's an hour, 100 RPM. I find it's a little bit lower, to be honest. I find like 100 RPM more is like 55, but anyway, that's me. So maybe I'm not as efficient as they say, or whatever. But anyway, so r roughly around that. So it's not too bad, but it's not insane. Like at 50 k's an hour, 90 cadence. So let's say you want to go 55 k's an hour and you want 90 cadence, then it's going to be a little small. So I think for most people, it's probably fine. If you're racing, like if you can, you probably get you. You might as well get a 52 if it's possible with the gearing, which I'm just going to show you that it is. So we have a 34 28, um, which is you know like decent gearing. I'd say that's that's the minimum I really want. Um, so 34 28. At like 100 cadence gives you 15 k's an hour, which is good. Um, and I more say 10 k's an hour allows you 70 cadence. So 10 k's an hour is normally about the minimum that I'm going on climbs, um, even when it's quite steep. Normally 10 k's an hour because the steeper the climb, normally it's shorter. Okay, maybe maybe sometimes it's a bit extreme, but normally. So I usually run a 34, 32. So 10 k's an hour is 80 cadence. So that's 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 pretty comfortable. Quite enjoy that. It's not, not too bad, uh, 80 cadence, as long as you're not trying to push out 400, 500 watts, it's fine. And then a 34, 34 would also be very good as well, because then at 10 k's an hour, it would really be like more 85 cadence maybe. Uh, so anyway, if we go on the 52, 36, you can see a 52, 11 gives you a little bit more speed, so 100 cadence is 59.9, so pretty much 60 k's an hour, and here it's 57.63. So it's marginal, but a bit of difference there, not going to lie. You can feel it. Feels a bit like more comfortable at higher speeds. But anyway, so we'll go on the really important thing. So 36.28 at 100 cadence gives you 16.3 k's an hour. So that's a little bit 1 k an hour better, as in you have to go 1 k an hour faster uh, than the 34.28. 3 k's an hour than the 34.32. Okay, so it's quite bad. Um, so let's say you're doing 10 k's an hour. I mean, 10 k's an hour is like 60, 60 cadence, 65 cadence. It's, it's just not really possible, not really comfortable, not really practical for a lot of people. I mean, so for instance, me, I have an FTP of 5 watts per kilo, and I, I find I struggle on some of the real steep stuff with the 3628. Uh, so 3632 is equivalent to uh, 3428. So if we see here, 100 cadence, 14.3 k's an hour, um, and 100 cadence is 15.3. So it's not exactly, actually. I don't know. Just, just check. Oh yeah, thirty six, thirty two. Yeah, it's it's slightly different. Um, I think it's lower, isn't it? One hundred fourteen point three one. And here will be. Oh no, no. So it's slightly. Yeah, it is lower. Sorry, the thirty four twenty eight. So it's actually lower. The thirty six thirty two. Um, but the thirty six thirty four. That's what we're talking about. That that I think is a real good thirteen point four three k's an hour at hundred cadence. And we go at the 34.32, and we can see 13.43 cadence. So actually, the 36.34 is a very good gear to have, um, and the 36.32 is basically, I think, uh, I think it's it would be a 34.30, which is not a terrible gear. Yeah, the 34.30 is 14.3. Yeah, so it's the 33. Sorry, there's so many numbers. 34.30 is equivalent to a 36.32. So it's it depends, like, if you feel you're not struggling too much, a 36.32 gives you slightly more than a co the average compact. The average compact would be 34.30, 28. Uh, so it's not too bad, but for me, I feel like I have a 34.32 on my other bike, and I really enjoy that. So I was thinking, how can I get a 36.34, that equivalent ratio? Um, so basically, I decided there were two ways of going about it. There was either shrinking the train rings and increasing the cassette keep or keeping the chain rings the same and just massively increasing the size of the cassette now if you decrease the chain rings obviously and increase the, ca the cassette slightly smaller you have smaller jumps 
for me, I didn't really mind too much about the jumps. It can be annoying, but you sort of get used to it. Um, but I also thought about the cost. So I was thinking, I'll need a new chain anyway. So I thought, £18 on the chain, that's fine. I've ridden my bike quite a long time now. Um, so I think it's probably time for a chain upgrade. I've done about 5,000 Ks or something on the bike. So not, not too far off replacing my chain anyway. Uh, so then I was like, I'll need to get a 5800 rear derailleur, the GS version. The GS does fit the th a 34. Um, and then I was like, I need a 34 cassette. 34 cassettes can be very hard to come by. They've only just really come out on Wiggle. But now you can get a Shimano Altegra R8000 cassette for um, £55, which is a lot for a cassette. Um, I'm not sure if it has jumps on here, but I don't know who spends that much on a cassette for the juries. Um so the average weight for an 1134 doesn't even have it. I think it's literally the. I don't think, I don't think they've really like, really researched it on here because it's actually just such a. Um, it, I think it only just came on. Any reviews? Yeah, muy bien. Um, so anyway, that it will be those three things that I need to buy w for the new cassette, which w would be cost 85 pounds. So it's not too bad, but it's annoying. It's annoying. The other option, which you probably already saw, was my new chain rings. So, chain rings seem to be really hard to find. So, let's say these two were £27 each. I tend to be, I don't think it actually matters. Uh, I hope it doesn't. Um, so, that would be, I have to buy two new chain rings, because I thought, oh, I could just do a 34 on the inner ring, and a 52 on the outside, but people are like, mm, it doesn't really work, doesn't really work. There's quite a big jump, and I'm not sure if the big jump would... I mean, I'm a rubbish mechanic in the first place, so I don't really want to have a huge jump that I have to be dealing with and aligning derailleur hangers and, I mean, front derailers and stuff, and that would just be, it sounds like a disaster to me. So, then you can see basically all the chain rings. That's the cheapest one I could find, apart from maybe this one, but this looks fucking ugly, and it's not really possible. So, anyway, £27 each. Then you have to buy the 1132 cassette for 105 which would cost £30 plus the chain and it brings it up to a total of £102 so it's cheaper to go for the 1134 um, and then you have a huge 5211 and then you also have a very small 3634 and I also think it's slightly more versatile because let's say you are racing that's in a crit then you, all you have to do is just change to an 1128 chuck it on the back, and off we go. You can ride the 1128, you can ride the 1134, so then you've got basically equivalent gear in a 3432. Now the only other thing I was thinking of doing, which could be slightly cheaper, is basically buy a 36 cassette, 11 speed, 36 cassette. Um, I can't remember how much it was all up on Amazon. I think it was, yeah, something like, it's not too bad for the 11 speed cassette. I think SRAM had one on there, so I'm like, yeah, this is it, for about 30, 36 pounds or something, I think it was. Yeah, the 1136, uh, it was 60 pounds, it's quite a lot. But anyway, so, and then you buy the road link, so if we go on Google, uh, the Linda Rats road link. I think Sigma Sports sell it. Uh, yeah, they do, here we go. It would cost twenty pounds plus. You need a new chain. Twenty six pounds. Sorry, you can get fakes on China. Should you buy them? I'm not sure. Not sure at all, really. Um, so then that would be you wouldn't have to change your derailleur. So you have sixty pounds on the cassette, twenty five pound, twenty six pounds. So that would be eighty six pounds, and then you'd have the new cassette, which would be eighteen. So then that would be um a hundred and four. It's about the same, but then you'd have a way bigger gearing because you, then you'd have a one to one ratio which would be equivalent to a 34-34 and you just have to ask yourself is it worth that and for me I just don't think it is because I think the huge jumps between the cassettes would just mug me off um, but it's expensive business this to get proper gearing on your bike I mean it's like I still don't understand why they do 52-36 like it doesn't really suit anyone like pure racers maybe someone who just races their bike and does nothing else with it but is an amateur then I'd say yes if you actually want to train on your bike, you want to go up steep climbs, like, I just wouldn't really recommend it, because the gearing is just quite simply not enough, like, in London, you can sort of get away with it, because there's no real steep climbs, but when you go somewhere where there are some steep climbs, like, even if Surrey, like, go up some of the 20 percenters, you're like, I sort of want an easier gear, because I don't want to be, like, doing 400, 500 watts up every little steep incline, because actually, I, that's the only gears I have, um, 
So I think, to be honest, what I'm going to do uh, is buy these parts, try and fit it myself. The 1134 cassette apparently does work. So the other option, if I 100% want to make sure it works, is to buy the new Shimano R8000, um, what's it called, rear derailleur. But that might just be too much money for me because I'm just not sure if it's really worth it. Uh, what the hell is that? Where is it gone? Uh, that's a 6800. Oh, yeah, here we go. That's the short cage. Short cage is 70. So I wouldn't be surprised if the long cage is even more expensive. Um, but the long cage definitely accepts 1134, but I'm pretty sure, almost I know. It's the same with the 32. The short cage takes the 32, and I'm almost certain this one takes the 34. Um, yeah, here we go. 75 pounds for a rear derailleur. It's a lot of coin. It's out of stock anyway, because I think probably loads of people bought it because they were like, oh yeah, now I can run my 34 on the back. Yeah, look here, it's like 11.25. Yeah, I don't really understand that, because you can run 11.28. Yeah, I don't really understand, to be honest, at all, any of this. Because if you think about it, why would it? Why would that work? Eleven twenty-five, eleven thirty, but eleven twenty-eight wouldn't work. I think this is written badly. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. I hope this helps you with your gears. I'd say go the eleven thirty-four if you want to have a big gear on the front. If you just want to have like the easiest gears, then yeah, go get a fifty thirty-four, eleven forty, and I'd recommend that. But for me, I don't. I haven't yet to find a place where I need eleven forty. Maybe on a an Everesting, I might might need an 1140, uh, but for an Everesting, I could, I don't know, I, I'll sort something out if I'm going to do an Everesting, I, I don't know if I will at some point, or just go on a slightly less steep climb, but for £85, you can get the gears in need, pretty much equivalent to a 5311, slightly less, and the same gears as a 3432, so that's pretty beautiful for me, cheers for watching, and uh, see you.